One thing I know for sure, God don't play about his people, period. It's not a thing where it's just a snap of a finger. He's not a genie. Ain't no sequel. The last season, Moedin. Ain't no getting through them gates without that blood on you. I can tell he ordering my steps. Cause when the world said no, the father still said yes. Apparently we're going with stealth black incognito today for this lesson. <laughs> but y'all, before I get started, as y'all saw last week that I told y'all I was pissed. I was pissed. And I had to since then apologize and atone for that anger and started the studies very heavily again and i wanted to go back in to the actual bible apart aside from the apocrypha and talk about esther and what transpired after that with the scriptures that came into my head more specifically, when it came to the situation with Haman and Esther and Mordecai. There's always seeming to be a situation where somebody sees somebody doing something differently, not paying attention to the king, not paying attention to rulership, whatever may have you. And they get mad, they get enraged, they want to kill him. However, more times than not, it's a situation where you think you're going to annihilate a whole group of people, yet God does not let it happen because that person or group is under his fortitude, right? Same situation. I would recommend anybody reading the entire account of Esther, but specifically from three on is when you see the situation with Mordecai. Haman, the king, and Esther. Now, Esther is now the queen because the old queen was just doing whatever she wanted to do and disobeyed him, the king that is. And when it comes to that, she was pruned to be a part of the king and he saw favor in her. So whatever she asked, pretty much, she got. And when I just think of that, it's currently, you have to use wisdom to your benefit. You have to use the favor in which God places on you. It could be an instant when he gives you that favor. So you have to recognize when that is and act upon it. You have to use wisdom nowadays to maneuver through many obstacles. So with Esther, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll read the whole thing meaning the third chapter let's see let's get to it yeah let me get it in there because I got all the books today we're getting all the books down today right gotta keep it on me just in case somebody wants to ask a question and it says now Haman kept seeing that Mordecai was not bowing low and prostrating himself to him, and Haman became filled with rage. But it was despicable in his eyes to lay hand upon Mordecai alone, for they had told him about Mordecai's people. And Haman began seeking to annihilate all the Jews who were in all the realm of the king Mordecai's people, because when it comes to the names, I don't be understanding and pronouncing all the way correctly so forgive me for misplacing a word or two yo this sun is on my neck hold on where my sunglasses because that glare is something different sorry all them white pages casting real glare but where was i um Esther 8, the reason why he wasn't doing what he was doing was because 
It says, and Haman proceeded to say to the king, there is one certain people scattered and separated among the peoples in all the jurisdictional districts of your realm, and their laws are different from all other peoples. And the king's own laws, they are not performing. And for the king, it is not appropriate to let them alone. And then this is when Haman decided to try and put it into law that pretty much just wanted to get rid of him and so forth. So here's the thing. When it comes to any situation, and this is, to me, is done beautifully. Because it not only shows favor in certain times where people use that favor for wisdom to save the group of people and so on. It's a very well done story. You know me, as soon as stuff started snowballing in my head, certain things like, as I said, favor, then servitude started popping up. The word footstool popped up in recompense because I'm at a point, especially in the story of Job that I continue to read after Esther, today just recompense not in a revengeful left-handed side type of way but there is a way in which the creator literally puts you in a situation where you need to a either get out of it b you wisdom to get through it or c just wait on him to deliver you out of it right so the scriptures that came into my head the first one when it came to favor is esther 9 specifically verses 2 through 11 and then jumping to 15 i suggest you read that it's just on the screen and so forth but that throughout that whole story and account the king was asking her once she became queen and so forth and even prior to that what is it that you seek and Mordecai initially because that's Esther's technical uncle that you please don't tell your lineage because usually if you get told or to avoid doing that it's a good reason as to why because there is some type of form of either envy hatred whatever may have you against the group of people that have been separated via God aka chosen of God and his people his children that comes with the territory so people just used their knowledge base with that to move accordingly and I just suggest more people to do the same however when it came to the later accounts in Esther where they were pretty much getting plundered because of Haman's actions against Mordecai specifically, people started perishing because they went after the people of the book, the chosen seed, if you will. And after that unfolded, if you notice when you read the story, they didn't plunder the land and they didn't take the spoil after. And that's because they knew that they were still in the captivity of that king. The king wasn't necessarily a bad ruler, if you will. It's not like he wanted to cause the issues between the Jews and the non-Jews. However, again, was not their land. So they proceeded to do what they needed to do when it came to the recompense and so forth. Did that, but didn't plunder the land. And it was because of the servitude that they were in. To further just explain that the first one that I want to pull out is in Ephesians and if you have your book forgot to grab it you want to grab it now feel free Ephesians 6 verses 5 through 8 it says you slaves be obedient to those who are your masters in the fleshly sense with fear and trembling in the sincerity of your hearts as to the Christ not by way of eye service as men pleasers, but as Christ's slaves, doing the will of God whole sold, whole sold. Be slaves with good inclinations, 
as to Jehovah and not to men. For you know that each one, whatever good he may do, will receive this back from Jehovah, whether he be slave or free men. So it's saying God knows that you're in the several captivities that you will be facing in, in which in the case of Esther currently in that time frame before and beyond. Being in captivity is not a new thing. It's been here since the beginning of time. However, when you are sold or not redeemed, whatever the case may have you, bond servant, bond maid, bond woman, you are supposed to be in servitude of those people at the time. And it's for the doing of Christ, if you're following me. If you're not following me, here's another example with Colossians. Colossians 3 and 22. Let's see here. You slaves, be obedient in everything to those who are your masters in the fleshly sense, just like in Ephesians, as it says. Pretty much says the same thing with not with acts of eye service as men pleasers, but with sincerity of heart with fear of Jehovah. It's with the sincerity of heart that's the difference between those scriptures because if you know the circumstances that you're in, and just like Mordecai, when he was not bowing down to the king and paying attention, doing what the other folk were doing, is because he knew that he was set apart. He knew that he had a separate pair of laws through God, via God, by God, that he needed to follow. And no man necessarily was going to stump him from doing that or create a snare for him with that. However, he wasn't causing havoc. He wasn't being someone that was being hostile when it came to not doing it. He was just minding his business and other people, When you, that's, that's a good point too because when you're just minding your business, people hate that. I don't understand why. But I understand why. It's because, <laughs> it's because you were set apart and people don't understand why you don't fit the fold or people don't understand why you're not acting accordingly to the masses or whatever. And people just simply don't like that because you're not appeased or you're not willing to do what other people are doing. I'm here to tell you right now, that's okay. Also with Red Letter, Let's pop a few, let's pop some Matthew in there, right? Let's do it. Referring to Matthew 5, verse 43, on down, and it says, You heard that it was said you must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. However, I say to you, continue to love your enemies and to pray for those persecuting you, that you may prove yourselves sons of your Father who is in the heavens, since he makes his sun rise upon the wicked people, and good makes it rain upon righteousness people and unrighteous. For if you love those loving you, what reward do you have? Are you not, are not also the tax collectors doing the same thing? And I think I pulled this out when it came to another example too in many videos ago, but people like to piggyback and teeter totter on what Christ is as opposed to the examples that you see throughout the book. You are supposed to love your neighbor as yourself, right? You are supposed to do that. You are supposed to love your enemy because the wisdom that you know, you already know you're set aside. You already know that you're separated. You already know that you are trying to be upright in judgment and righteous, if you will. People literally are going to try, in whatever case that it is, literally a case, are going to try and persecute you. It could be character assassination. It could be the judicial system. It could be something regarding persecution. I face the character assassination, amongst other things, as well as counterparts of mine and my loved ones have faced the judicial system. It is not a fun time. 
being persecuted in both senses are not a good time to have. However, you know specifically, especially if you're a person that, again, minds their business, not a person that's trying to put out evil in the world and so forth, yet stupid stuff comes to you, right? Because the enemy is trying to test you in any type of realm known to man. However, you have to understand that the apart, the separateness and so forth is what causes that. And you got to be sure that you have the faith in what it takes to endure that battle because it's no joke. All in all, in turn, that's what causes your enemies to be your footstool. If you have that faith increase and so forth, you're just able to notice that things around you people around you situations around you if they offend you you start to notice that they are on the wayside and they begin to deteriorate in the long run because they messed with you one thing i know for sure god don't play about his people period god does not play around with the people that say they love him and are keeping his commandments that just is what it is and converting the soul and converting the mind to be, be reborn again just to piggyback off of that in exodus chapter 23 verse 22 does a beautiful job of explaining this and again new world's translation there's many translations so i'll put it on the screen per usual and it says however if you strictly obey his voice and really do all that i shall speak then i shall certainly be hostile to your enemies and harass those who harass you I think in this version, version in particularly does a great job of encompassing what he would do for you. And another one is in Mark, Mark 12 and 36. And it says, by the Holy Spirit, David himself said, Jehovah said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. Again, the footstool, it's not saying like this version says, but you get the drift. And lastly, to me, these two scriptures embody recompense, as I mentioned before, because this is just speaking to me personally, because I'm feeling that this has to happen eventually for me and mine, right? And I really hope it does. You gotta cast lots every day to make it happen. But when it comes to the scriptures, and of course I'm using recompense as just like a general type of definition, but it would be in Joshua 10 verse 13. And it says, accordingly, the sun kept motionless and the moon did stand still until the nation could take vengeance on its enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasher? And the sun kept standing still in the middle of the heavens and did not hasten to set for about a whole day. So it's, first it's mentioning another book where Jasher obviously explains a situation where the enemies would be overtaken. I don't have that book as of yet, but once I do, I hope to dive in it and get more clarity on this scripture. But it's just, this is a cohesive and balanced book. You know what I mean? It is very relatable for those that truly just pay attention. The last scripture I want to actually leave you with here is in Deuteronomy 23 and verse 14 where it says, For Jehovah your God is walking about within your camp to deliver you and to abandon your enemies to you and your camp must prove to be holy and that he may see nothing indecent in you and certainly turn away from accompanying you you know how i'd be saying ifs in my videos if you do this god will do this if you do this so may have you here's a condition here right it says, and your camp must prove to be holy, set apart. 
knowing how to use wisdom, knowing how to maneuver in certain situations through him by faith, especially in Christ, you know? So this is, this can only happen. The enemies can be your footstool eventually, only if you know God needs to be in your corner and you know Christ has the dominion over everything to make it happen. That is the only way that you're able to get the recompense that you A, probably deserve and B, need so that way you can have an ease about yourself, right? It may take a longer time. It usually takes a very long time in people's lives to feel that sense of ease because they know God did certain things for them to get them out of certain situations or getting them through a rough period. And for me, with the rough period, the only thing that does help me is the reading. The only thing that does help me is the reinsurance that I know that people went through what they went through in here as it's recorded and written. But I also know that during current times, stuff like this is still happening. So as a true example, I believe that is going through a situation where it is very unjust. It is something that pisses me off. It is something that just doesn't make sense when it comes to getting people to just earn a buck in certain systems. It's all about money in the situation. And I can't control anything about it. I'm literally a sitting duck until situations are rolled out. However, I pray that the situation is cleared so that way I can really dive into the specifics on what has happened, on why I've been indicating that, you know, I was pissed at him and so forth and I needed to apologize and so forth. So that's the premise in which my mental was in. I dived into Esther and Job and then it expanded into Ephesians, Matthew, Colossians, and so forth. So that's just how my mind works. So I hope me explaining it to you with those bits of scripture. Again, I recommend you reading the whole account of Esther to get the full context of what I spoke on and then piggyback off of the scriptures that I indicated to you. So that way you can get a broader understanding on how things in the precepts fit together and how it can fit your own life. Because if you do feel like your back is against the wall because of said people that are trying to impose something on you and you don't want to do it and so forth. And it's not like you're trying to be an a-hole about it. You're just set apart. A. B. There are things in which you will be able to notice that the dislike, the hatred, whatever may have you, is going to turn over for you and you're not gonna, you, you don't have to battle it. God's got it, period. His reach is way stronger and more mighty than yours will ever be. So you have to understand the scriptures and in order to ask what you need out of him and it's not like he's a person that will just give it to you automatically you have to work for your blessings you have to work and talk with him and figure it out it's not a thing where it's just a snap of a finger he's not a genie okay god is not a genie he don't work that way so you need to like i said work at it get into the scriptures love him love christ keep his commandments and formulate things together so that way you can understand and relate and know that you are his child period and i feel this side of my throat closing up so that is my time and cue to go so i hope this is helpful and until the next one take care